I want to pose a question to, I guess, my viewing audience, if I even have one. Uh, what was the biggest and most difficult part about not having a relationship for you? Now, for me, it it's kind of difficult to say because it went from being one thing to another as I, I guess, aged, got older, advanced. I don't know if that's the proper way to explain it. So back when I was starting out uh, in high school and kind of in middle school too a little bit, there were a number of couples that I would see around me and I would watch their reactions to each other in person when they see each other they hug each other uh, they send these messages talking about how they like the other person so well and how they're all favorable and uh they give life new me all the you know this mushy stuff that i could believe both of them believed in and felt about each other a genuine relationship if you will that was really convincing that you matter to the other person beyond what you look like or what connections you have, what I would classify as a fake relationship. So when I got to uh, high school and, you know, again, in the first year or two, that was what I was really seeking to do. And yeah, you'll say, oh, you probably went after someone you thought was uh, attractive or high in the social ladder, but you know, that was at the point where I didn't really think anything wrong with how I looked or uh, my interactions with others. Basically, I didn't have the same feelings of doubt that I later developed as a result of either these experiences or others combined. Now, I would say between, so um, today's May 22nd, 2017, I would say in the, the, the shift or move toward this idea that I just am not going to get it in terms of a relationship that actually is genuine where I'm into the person and they're into me in the same way. This isn't just about looks or who you're connected with and what you can do for me that is, you know, be using you for ulterior motives, I shifted from thinking I could get anything but that roughly two years ago to today. It was midway through um, the end. Of, and actually, I take that back. It was the end of when I was in 11th grade. And by that point, I had gone through a number of, of attempts at courting um, females that I was in school with at the time and just couldn't be bothered to assume any of them were going to have the same willingness to not only get into a relationship but also develop genuine feelings for the other person. Now, after this, and really since then, I've had this thing where the only thing that bothers me or rather, the thing that bothers me the most about, you know, this kind of pessimistic view I have toward never getting a relationship that will remain or last or be fulfilling is that in the last um, year or so, I've gone to school with a number of people who have children and, uh, you know, have basically started their own family almost. And, you know, I'm the kind of person who, to give you an idea, I can say in 10 years, this will happen. In 10 years, I'll have tried to make this happen. And I can't see it happening for me. I can't see any type of family beyond what I already have. Like, I, I can't see me starting my own is what I'm trying to convey here. And it won't be for lack of trying because I can, you know, recall to you at least 30 different occasions where I tried and I'm not making that number up over the last five or six years and it didn't work out. So really the attitude I've, I've taken of, with the pessimism, yes, you can say that's 
contributed in the latter part to, you know, the negativity of not even wanting to bother. But the fact remains, I tried more than just a handful of times with different women that were in my respective area. And outside of uh, my state and just around the world almost. Um, and I took away from this that, you know, they don't want you over here. They don't want you over there. They don't want you in the Middle East. You're not going to get that marriage, that, uh, that bond that produces the offspring thing that you want. That was always the long-term goal that I saw for a fruitful relationship. And the worst part is I can't even talk about that without someone getting in their head, oh, he was just looking for a, a surrogate, yeah. It's like, no, because I genuinely wanted to be in a marriage or at least something that was similar to a marriage, a, a co-parenting thing, because I get tired of hearing these stories of single mothers having to do things by their own. And they're, they're true stories, but I didn't want to contribute to that. So that's why I was so hell bent on getting this started early on when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16, because I knew that with the longer span of time of liking a person, you theoretically would grow closer. I mean, you know, my best friend I've known longer uh, than most other people I've met and I'm more likely to trust him with things than the guy I met a year or two ago. So I don't think it, there's that much of a stretch of the imagination to where when I say that uh, it was something that I rationalized to myself. So, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing what, what is your biggest, uh, t I guess, frustrating part about not having a relationship for me, at first, it was knowing that you won't get the fulfillment of being with another person. And the worst part, the the absolute atrocity is when they say, oh, well, you have to find fulfillment in yourself. Like, look, I could do and complete every single assignment, project, and thing I want done. But if there's nobody to share that with, then what good is it? Yes, I can feel accomplished because I got the Nobel Peace Prize, but if there's no one to revel at it with me or share in the experience, how fulfilling can it be? You know, they, they get on my nerves with that when they, they make these uh, focus on yourself and and making yourself whole and fulfillment and everything. I can't make a kid by myself. And they know that and they still say it, so... Yeah, I'm curious in what your uh, response to that question will be.